Biotechnical. Welcome back again to another video. So today in this video, I'll be talking about the top 10 permanent government jobs after pursuing your PhD in life sciences. If you are looking for some permanent government jobs after completing your PhD, then this video is definitely going to help you. So I'll be talking in this detail, the complete job details. So this is Caroline Green from Biotechnical. If you are someone who is looking for a job in a government job in any of the sector after completing your PhD then I'll be talking in details for so first let's talk about government professors yes I'm gonna tell it in detail so what's gonna be the scenario after completing your PhD we already know that you can become a lecturer or assistant professor even after completing your MSc but with CSIR net LS or UGC net LS then you can become an assistant professor. But if you want to go in for a university and become an assistant professor, then definitely you need to have your PhD degree. So I'll be talking after completing your uh, PhD in any of the fields like life sciences, like microbiology or any of these things, what are the things that you can go for? So I'll be discussing uh, the government colleges and universities that are available along with if you want to go in for IIT or NIT or IAC, what's going to be the criteria that you can enter as a government professor. So if it's we are going to talk in case of a normal government university or government colleges, whichever it is, which is under the uh, aided governments, we can say, which is under the control of government, whichever college you're going to talk about arts and science, or even if you're belonging to an engineering graduate in chemical engineering or biotechnology or biomedical engineering, the eligibility is going to be the same. So if you have PhD, even if you have net LS cleared, or even if you do not have net LS cleared, then you are good enough to go and join as a assistant professor in any of the government colleges as well as in any of the government universities also. So you are applicable to go whether you have net LS or without net LS. If you have your PhD, you're good enough to go in for government colleges and university. And if you are, have done only masters, then you need to have your net LS as we already know about it. But the salary package will vary according to the criteria. The next is going to be if you want to become an assistant professor in IITs or NIT or IAC, what's going to be the eligibility criteria? If you're someone who are looking for position in IIT and IITs, then this is for you. So you need to have your PhD, but the most important criteria over here is three years postdoctoral experience you need to have. And applicants, suppose if they have less experience, can I apply for IIT and IIT? Yes, you are eligible, but you will be in the contract basis for some period of time. Suppose you have completed a PhD for now and you have only six months of experience or one year of experience, then you can apply for IITs, all IITs, all NITs and even IAC, but you will be in a contract basis for some period of time after your performance is good, then you'll be taken as the complete assistant professor in IIT, NIT and IAC. This is about IIT, NIT and IAC. Now the next comes is what are the levels that are actually uh, given in case of Indian government? We have assistant professor and then we have associate professor and then we have the professor so in assistant professor you will be initially joining as a PhD with a little bit of experience and then you will become an associate professor after having a certain amount of publications there will be a criteria for this much of publications you need to have um, and also you need to have a little bit of experience of so almost some uh, period of experience you need to have like seven to eight years of experience then only you'll be upgraded as associate professor and then comes the professor it then uh, gradually becomes different different designation you'll be going for but these are the designation you will be in whether you are going to be a vice chancellor or if you become any of these things in a college or university, the designation is going to remain the same. The next comes what is going to be the great pay according to the Indian government. I'm going to talk about this is government uh, professors. I'm not talking about the uh, private colleges, which usually have this one. This is for government assistant professor. You're initially going to talk, have rupees 45,000 per month. If you become an associate professor, it can vary from rupees 80,000 even till 1 lakh plus a thousand you're going to get when we talk in case of IIT and IIT and IAC, it's going to be more than the thing that I'm talking about. It's an average salary I'm talking. For an, a professor, the senior professors, it's going to be rupees 82,000 to 1 lakh 20,000 for one month. I'm talking it for the one month. So if you have completed your PhD, then definitely 
academia entering into academia is a wonderful opportunity for you you can try in for government colleges all the things the next come of course is scientist if you have uh, a liking towards uh, research then you can definitely go for scientist and there are different level that you can see uh, it may vary according to the institutions so in normal scenario we used to say scientists are one level scientists two level and then principal scientists and senior principal scientists so in that case also we can categorize or in most of the research institute, if you go in for like CSIR or DBT or if you talk in case of DRDO, there used to be positions like scientist A, B, C, D, E, F, G and even H is also available. Honorary scientist is going to be H. You'll be starting as a scientist A. So these are the levels and what are the institutions that you can go for? If you would like to go in for a scientist, I'm talking in case of a government profession. So here you can enter into CSIR laboratories. So these are some of the CSIR laboratories for your reference. Suppose if you are looking for a scientist position in any of the CSIR laboratories, then you can go in for these uh, CSIR websites and you can look in for what are the scientist positions that are available. Usually there will be a call fair from all this institution. You can go, go and check in their website so that you will get to know about all this thing. The next comes DBT Institute. Suppose if you are someone who would like to go for Department of Biotechnology, then these are some of the institute where you can apply as a scientist level A. Initially, you'll be applying as a scientist level A. PhD can also apply or PhD with postdoctoral experience or PhD with little bit of experience, then you can also apply. Or else you can even apply as a research associate also. So this is about the DBT and there are many things. I put some of the DBT institutes over here. And this is about the ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research. And these are some of the institute in ICMR. This is the official website you're seeing. So you can apply to any of the ICMR institute and you can start applying for the scientist positions. There are requirements which will be coming for each of the scientist positions. So the next comes ICAR, yes, uh, suppose if you would like to go in for agriculture research, when we compare it with all these cases like CSAR, DBT, ICMR and ICAR, uh, becoming a scientist in ICAR is comparatively easier when we talk in case of CSAR, DBT and ICMR. So even after masters along with experience, people have entered and become scientists in ICAR Institute also. These are some of the ICAR Institute which is listed here. There are many things you can go to the official website of ICAR. Then you can look what are the uh, scientist positions that are available for you. And accordingly, you can start applying for scientist position. And now the most important question comes for us is what's going to be the great pay average range of a scientist. So it might be varying according to the institutions, but usually you will have a level pay seven or eight. Accordingly, you'll be having. So great pay will be varying according to the levels usually. So I have written an average salary of rupees 90,000, but it is varying from scientist A to scientist H or to G position. So according to the institution, you can literally see the payment. This is an average range that you will be getting as a scientist per month, 90,000. The next comes administrative officer or technical officer. Yes, this is also another field. Suppose you would like to go in for a research institute, but you would like to end up in an administrative job, then you can also go in for this one. This is administrative officer or technical officer. So here, uh, I'm going to tell you one example of this one. There is a post called as Program Manager in DBT Biocare Processing and Monitoring Unit in ICGB, uh, Genomics Unit they have. And this post, if you're going to see, uh, literally you can see uh, the payment for this month or the salary of this position is going to be rupees 97,000 for one month. This is an administrative position. After your PhD, you can literally apply for this position. There are many positions like this in most of the research institute. I'm just giving one as an example. So you can go in for ICMR, CSAR, DBT, ISRO, DRDO. And you can find a lot of administrative officer position. So the officer positions are different scenarios like job profiles will be different. So you can go to their website and check in for what are the administrative positions that are available. And there are a lot of technical officer positions that is available also you can check in over. I'm going to show you one example of DRDO. What's going to be the salary package? As I already mentioned, it's based on the level scales you can see. So if you're going to be a distinguished scientist in DRDO, you're, you're actually going to be just Department of Atomic Energy. It's almost going to be 2,54,000. Almost you're going to get 2 lakh, approximately 2 lakh to 2 lakh 24,000. And outstanding scientists will be getting almost 1 lakh 82. And scientific officer, as I already mentioned, you're going to get 1 lakh 44,000 per month. And this actually goes like you can see scientific officer D. 
here it's almost going to be you can see 67000 so even a technical officer gets a good amount of pay which is still 2 lakh you can see so technical officer scientific officer whatever it is you can go for or administrative officer you can go after your phd the next comes scientific officer as i already mentioned in case of uh, drdo you can take up at either at administrative positions or you can take up a scientific position and this also you will find in most of the government institute the scientific officer position most importantly, if you'd like to go for forensic laboratories, then it is available in Central Forensic Laboratory, ICAR, CSAR, DBT, ICMR, ICAR. And it's available in most of the government institutes, scientific officer, one, two, three positions are available. And this is variable, as I already mentioned over here, uh, in case of DRDO, as I was showing it over here, you can see scientific officer D, scientific officer E, G, everything. So here also you will have a different variation according to the institutions. So an average pay you will be getting from 44 to 1 lakh 42 thousand. This is just an average pay. This will be variable according to the institutions. The next comes uh, public service undertaking. So this is actually a government undertaken once or even completely controlled by the government also partially controlled or completely controlled. So we can consider it as a government one. So what are the institutions that comes here? Like Bharat Immunological and Biological Corporation usually recruits masters along with experienced candidate and PhD candidates. If called like Indian Vaccine Corporation in Delhi also recruit, there are different positions. So you can just go onto the website and check uh, the PhD requirements, whichever is requiring for, you can just apply to it. And BIREC, which is Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council. You can apply to these PSU also after completing your PhD. The next comes... Let's talk about research associate. Yes, suppose if you are someone who would like to go in for research again, then you can start your project. Uh, you can take up any project and work over there as a research associate also. After your research associate, then you can start working. There are many positions like research associate one, research associate two. And there you can go in for any of the government sectors like CSAR, DBT, ICMR, DRDO. And the grade pay usually going to be 47,000. So I've written it might be variable from uh, rupees 37,000 to 67,000 per month. But usually it's going to be 47,000. But it can be variable according to the skills that you have like research one, uh, research associate two. So you can also go for this one. But anyway, you have to land up after a uh, scientist later. The next comes patent examiner. I'm going to talk about this patent examiner. Many people used to think only a master students can write patent examiner or patent agent examination. Patent agent examination, anybody can write like master students can also write. Even a PhD student can also write. After completing a PhD, you can start applying for this patent examination, which is intellectual property. Uh, India, you can go to the website and you can check. There are going to be paper one and paper two where you will have uh, aptitude along with that you will be having the intellectual property rights all the rules and regulation you will be having as a examination so you can also become a patent examiner as we already know about what is patent examiner usually does he examines whether this project or any of the work that's been done by a person can be given a patent or not according to the rules and masters or phd candidates can also apply the government institute is definitely going to be intellectual property India. So this is the main reason I'm telling because the great pay initially will be as a government officer. You'll be a government officer. So you'll be having rupees 70,820 initially as a patent analyst one itself or patent agent one itself. So this is a wonderful opportunity ending up in a government institute even after your PhD. The next comes project assistant. It's not only going to be scientist A to scientist H or G. There are other positions which you'll be working as a project itself. You'll become a project scientist. So you can find this project scientist positions in Wildlife Institute of India. Like if you are wanting to end up in zoological background, then you can go for Wildlife Institute of India. There are a lot of project assistant or project scientist positions which are available where you're going to get a good amount of salary through this also. The next is principal project assistant or project assistant. So this is this is also available for uh, PhD completed graduates. So in IAC, there would be a release of these positions in different different laboratories in different different a principal investigator will be calling up for this one so this is also a wonderful job permanent government job that you can literally go in for 
after this you can land up working over isc or you can go in for any of the jobs but this is going to be a scientist position that you can actually hold up the next is education officer suppose if you do not want to go to a college you do not want to go to a research institute but you would like to end up discussing about how research can be made or it can be implemented further then you can coordinate with some state directors like state government jobs and you can become a senior executive members you can talk about it what exactly happens is how the implementation can be done this education officer people can be having a phd degree along with a little bit of experience working in some academia then definitely you can become an education officer this position is available in many many places like you can be an education officer in dbt where you will be dealing with the state officials or the senior educational professionals many many things dst serb government schools also you can go for after your phd where you will be becoming an education officer like kendri vidyalaya ncert usually calls up for education officer where it's a government job where you have a very good amount of pay it's a permanent position also where you can literally go for education officer also the next comes application scientist if you're someone who would, doesn't want to do dry la wet lab research very specifically you can take up application scientist because in this role you will be dealing with business professionals technical staffs and you will be creating what's the statement of purpose like project writings and you will be managing the technical people so you can take up application scientist application scientists are very good enough after your phd in india as well as abroad you can see lot of positions that are available a fresh phd candidate can also apply for this position or if you are an experienced phd candidate after having some years of experience then you can also go in for this this is a government opportunity this is also available in most of the government institutes like icmr csir laboratory thsti and you know, IBAB in Bangalore so these application scientists are also available after you complete your PhD so if I have to summarize the complete one after doing your PhD in life sciences if you are looking for a permanent government position then you can go in for a gov government professor because this is the minimum eligibility to enter into a university or a college so you can look in for government uh, jobs being assistant professor initially or you can apply for scientist position in most of the laboratories or if you're someone who would like to go in for administrative sector or into technical officer one then you you can literally go a lot of institutes are available or if you want to become a scientific officer this is also a permanent position or if you would like to go in for psu you can definitely go for or if you want to work for some period of time in research then you can go for research associate but a anyway you have to land up in a scientist position of course patent examiner and project scientist education officer and application scientist this is uh, the 10 list that i'm talking about but not only this uh, after completing your phd you can also write many examinations like you can uh, become a food inspector you can go in for forensic service uh, so you can become uh, you can write many of the upsc examinations psu examination sseu examination which is going to fetch you a permanent government jobs very specifically in life sciences also like you can become a quality control officer there are many many jobs that are available through UPSC, SSC and PSU state governments. So you can look in for all the opportunities that is available. So today I've been talking about the top 10 permanent government jobs even after completing your PhD in life sciences. So I believe that this video is helpful for all of you. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel Biotechnica. If you have any questions regarding this one, you can always put it in the comment section. We'll get back to you. Thank you all of you.